In less than two weeks, WWE Network is moving its entire library to Peacock. Well, maybe not its entire library. Pro Wrestling Bits. Subscribe now. It's the home stretch of WrestleMania season and one of the biggest feuds will pit the WWE Network against standards and practices because NBC is hiring a team of goons to look over all 17,000 hours of the WWE Network to ensure it's clean enough for an NBC audience. A Twitter question from Wrestling Inc. got me to thinking about all the various moments that might not make it to Peacock. In fact, the Peacock police have already begun to clamp down on controversial WWE moments and content that doesn't align with standards and practices. Practices. Coming in at number five, Roddy Piper painting half his body in blackface during his feud with Bad News Brown at WrestleMania 6. Memorable as this feud was, it will be given the nothing to see here treatment for as long as the WWE Network is on NBC Peacock. And if NBC Universal ends up buying WWE, that clip might be harder to find than Billy Kay. While we're at it, say your last goodbyes to Vince McMahon saying the N-word, which unlike Bark Like a Dog, wasn't part of any storyline. It was just Vince flexing on his audience, showing them he can get away with saying the N-word, which he totally did. Unbelievable. Also, enjoy your last moments with the Nation of Domination getting their locker room vandalized with racial slurs, JBL's heel promo at the border of Mexico, Degeneration X and Blackface. We'll be here all day if we do the whole list. And while some of these moments were admittedly entertaining during simpler times, NBC suddenly stands for no blackface characters. Number four is the aforementioned and infamous Bark Like a Dog promo. I'm not going to give you any type of disclaimer, but I loved this promo. Still do. I watch it a few times a year, and I'm going to miss it when it's gone. Easily one of Vince McMahon's best promos of his entire career. Vince leaned into every toxic heel instinct he had in a scathing tirade against Trish Stratus. It was a public humiliation of biblical proportions that set up a satisfying conclusion at WrestleMania 17, arguably the greatest WrestleMania ever. And don't get it twisted, this hot angle was a big reason for that. Vince was in rare form as the top heel of this company. Remember, the WrestleMania main event that year was between two baby faces. So Vince carried out his duties immaculately by being a truly despicable character who eventually got his comeuppance from Shane McMahon, Linda McMahon, Mick Foley, and yes, Trish Stratus. Shout out to them. I still view this entire feud and Vince McMahon's awesome promo in the vein of a heel getting heat and eventually having to answer for his actions on a big stage. It's not like Vince developed some racist character who still got to win in the end, thereby sending the wrong message to his viewer. There, that's your f***ing disclaimer. And while we're at it, don't expect to see some of WWE's other sexually charged controversies like Sable and Pasties, Edge and Lita's live sex celebration, Mae Young topless, or any bra and panties match. We hardly knew ye. Coming in at number three is Katie Vick. What could be said about the Katie Vick storyline that hasn't already been said about Randy Orton versus The Fiend? Everything has been said about it. So here, let's do another NBC acronym. NBC suddenly stands for necrophilia ban completely. And while we're at it, enjoy these controversial on-location segments while you still can. Brian Pillman pulling a gun on Stone Cold Steve Austin in his home. The Big Boss Man, such an underrated heel. Dragging Big Show's dad's dead carcass across the cemetery. And Vince and Shane McMahon going to church to mock God as if that segment wasn't hilarious. Number two is Jerry Lawler's jaw-dropping promo against Goldust. Check it out for yourself. He said some wild stuff that I'm surprised he even got away with saying then. You could tell by the crowd's reaction he had crossed the line, so don't expect him to join the rest of the WWE Network as it crosses the line over to Peacock. The same could be said for roughly half of ECW's promos and anything with Joel Gertner. And at number one, the Eugene character figures to be canceled entirely due to its perceived insensitivity to those with special needs and mental disabilities. I get it, but Nick Dinsmore was a hell of a worker and really Really poured his heart into that character. Other characters you shouldn't expect to see on Peacock include Goldust from 97 to 98, who also wore blackface a couple times, and let's face it, Kamala's days might be numbered. R.I.P. Sugar Bear.